Good afternoon, everyone, or hello, everyone, wherever you might be, or whatever time of the day it is. I trust you're all doing well. Welcome to our next training video in Luke's Gospel, specifically looking at Luke chapter 12, verses 49 to 59. And I'd encourage you um, to read it and prayerfully consider it, and then to continue with this training video. But just looking at this passage in Luke chapter 12, verses 49 to 59, it's quite an interesting passage. It's one of Jesus' mission statements, um, and it's quite a unique one, because the last time Jesus gave his mission statement in Luke chapter 5, verses 32, I've came to call sinners to repentance, you would expect something similar. But we read Jesus saying in Luke 12, 49 to 50, he says, I came... He says, I came to cast fire on the earth, and with it it were already kindled. And then next he says, I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how great is my distress until it is accomplished. A baptism to be baptized with. And also interesting, straight after that he talks about division. This sounds quite contrasting. But there's already a bit of context here regarding these words, and hopefully I can bring them out for you. And the first one is the word fire. It's used a lot in Luke's Gospel, and it, it's a reference often, interestingly, to the Holy Spirit and judgment. Specifically, a, a good passage to go to is Luke 3, 15 to 16, where John the Baptist says, The one who comes will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire, and straight after that, talking about judgment. And interestingly, when the Holy Spirit appears, he appears in Acts chapter 2, verse 8, as tongues of fire. And in other parts of Luke's gospel, the, the language of fire is used regarding judgment. So Jesus is saying he's come to cast fire on the earth in the sense of judgment, but also the Holy Spirit through whom that judgment will also come. A key passage maybe is like John 16, which talks about the ministry of the Holy Spirit being a ministry of judgment as well. But this will only happen, he says, when he's baptized. A baptism in verse 50. And interestingly, it's a reference used by Jesus regarding his crucifixion and death. And again, the language of baptism or waters um, involve judgment. And to give you a little bit of background, you can just read Genesis 6, 17, where God talks about the flooding waters of judgment with Noah. Psalm, Psalm 18, which refers to the flooding waters, for example, regarding judgment. And Isaiah 8 is another key one where the armies of Assyria are described as a flood that will judge Israel, wipe them clean off the earth. And Jesus is saying he's going to face a baptism, a judgment, which refers to his crucifixion and death. So this fire is going to come down with his, after his baptism. And the result, of course, of both, Jesus says, is division. Micah 7, 6 is a good prophetic reference regarding it. His ministry and the ministry of the Spirit will divide people. And I mean, we've already seen this before when you consider Jesus' ministry in Luke 10, 23, when he says, He who is not with me is against me. And interestingly, when the Holy Spirit has come down and you look at the Apostles' ministry, you see the same idea. The people of the city, for example, when Paul and Barnabas were ministering in Iconium, says the people of the city were divided. Some sided with the Jews others with the apostles. This ministry of Jesus, of fire and baptism, divides people. And that's just the reality of the gospel. But even so, there's judgment involved in this division as well. And that's why Jesus calls them to a, a response. And firstly, Jesus laments and rebukes them for their failure to respond, their failure to read the times. Now, in Matthew's Gospel, this specific passage is applied to the Pharisees and Sadducees, the religious leaders who Jesus also rebuked earlier on in Luke 11, when he says, you know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret, importantly, the signs of the times. And he, the reason that they can't interpret it, he says, is because they're in an evil and adulterous generation. Sounds a lot like Luke 11. And interestingly, in Luke 12, applying this to the crowd, speaking to the crowd, he calls them, you hypocrites, another character flaw regarding sin. And he says, you know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? 
Now it's important to see what Jesus means by times. And it's basically, he has come. This is the time of fulfillment. If you know your Old Testament, you see what Jesus is doing. You can see that the times have come. The signs are all there. But their failure to see it is not because Jesus is not clear. It's because of hypocrisy or sin. They are unwilling to see it. But nevertheless, Jesus calls them and says, Cheers, why don't you judge for yourselves what is right? And then he admonishes them, try hard to be reconciled to him on the way with that parable, which goes back to his original mission calling, calling people to repentance or sinners to repentance. There's still this call to respond, read the times correctly and respond by reconciling to God through Christ by repentance and faith. This is urgent because if you read verse 59, there's a finality to this judgment and this division. As he puts it, I tell you, you will not get out until you've paid the last sin, that prison of judgment that he uses in the parable. But really what you want your people to walk away with is importantly is Jesus and the Holy Spirit's ministry will bring division and judgment. But it's important to see it applies to both the believer and the unbeliever. Believers experience this division when they convert to Christ. Suddenly, family, relative, friends, there's a division because of Christ. And unbelievers experience this division as well and will ultimately experience that at the ultimate judgment. But also... What they need to bring is that the only proper response to Jesus, of course, is to recognize the times and to respond in faith repentance. Luke 24, 44 to 47 is a great passage to go to just to see how Jesus says the times have come, there's fulfillment, and in him there's the forgiveness of sins. But then, of course, as Jesus stresses it, stresses it himself, is the urgency of the calling for people to respond there's eternal judgment and division awaiting. There's no time to lose. And we need to take Jesus' call seriously. And I'd say that in a nutshell is what Luke 11 verses 49 to 59 is all about.